<laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have to re-explain everything because I didn't have this thing on. So just bear with me here. <laughs> He's dumb. So. Yeah, it's recording now. The red light's on. So just for the sake of this recording thing, I'm gonna explain everything again. So you guys will get these papers, and then there's posters around the room that you guys will look at, and then you'll have to identify the country, two reasons why it's fascist, totalitarian, and what is the message trying to convey. And Mr. McKelkey will come and do that. You guys will be in a group. So it's like, it's like you're going to an art gallery. And then I'm going to give eight of you these secrets. I'll give you one. You one. You look shy. You take one. Okay. Give you one. And you guys can't let him know that you guys are giving these secrets. You know what? Actually, yeah. Here. We've got two more. Fight for it. Okay. Okay, so the people that have the secrets read them, okay, so the people that have the secrets read them, and get into your head what, you're, what they are about, and then you have to show everybody, so like say I gave Emma one, which I did, she has to give everybody that secret, so by the end of it, everybody will have that secret and all in the seven others, and got that. Yeah, but she can't let Mr. McKelkey know that she has that secret. Okay. It, that goes for everybody else. Yeah, you can keep the paper. Don't let him find you with that paper. And don't let him try to, and don't let him figure out that you have it or you showing anybody. Squat jacks, push-ups. He's going to be a real Richard when he comes in. So, he's, and so, there's different things. I don't think you guys need that. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what he's gonna be. He's gonna just for the thing. So, and then he'll explain these things. You guys will read it and try to act interested, because he might make you do push-ups for random reasons. So, I think that's anything. Anybody have any questions? This is just a fun thing to do for class. So, don't be an idiot. He'll make you do push-ups, squat jacks, different things. Uh, Ryan. All right, does everybody have everything? Good. Yeah, put those away. He probably won't let you have those. So, all right. Okay, good luck with you guys. Make sure you guys have everything, a book. He'll come in. You guys will start with Mussolini, I think. Good? Okay. Have fun, you guys. I'll tell him to come in, and I need Wait. that couch. You not got groove. Not yet. Hey, not yet. He'll come in and wait till he comes in. Oh, what do we have to do? Yeah. Where do you go? Hey, hey, you don't write anything okay. down yet. So what he'll, whoever has, he told us yeah, not so to do anything you secret, yet. You have to give everybody that secret. Like, pass it do we have to know what like, this pass it around, is? Yeah. Hey, hey, Mr. McCalkey. You're real cool. What? Can't let him know. I started. That, that, you can't let him know that. You, you can't let him know the secret. We don't write. That's anything. why it's a secret. We don't write anything anything secret. Yet. Okay, secret. everybody, hush. We don't write anything. Yet. Shush. So if I gave you the secret, you have to give everybody that secret, but you can't let him know that you're giving that secret out. And you, you just oh, tell you it to people. Oh, and then also that reminds me. You can't let him catch you. Yeah, you can't let him catch you with the secret. Also, you you when you guys you. figure out the secret, if somebody tells you that secret, you have to write it down on your piece of paper. Oh. Just in one of these boxes. Oh. Yeah. So as I said again, don't let him catch you with the secret. Don't let him see you passing it around because you will end up doing spot jacks. Yeah. But I thought we had to write. You will. Write both. Oh, okay. I got you. Wait, okay. is there, there's one secret for everyone? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And by the end, he will quiz you on the secrets, so make sure that you have all of them. And I think everybody knows who has the secret. Just don't get caught or anything else. And question? You said what? Yeah. So what will happen is he'll come in. You guys will probably start with Mussolini over here. He'll explain how great it is and all this stuff. And whoever has the secret from Mussolini, yeah, that's that one. They'll have to give the secret out. Think that's where I'm so he'll come in. It'll be like a tour. He'll come in. You guys will all gather over here. Yeah, this is the art gallery. He'll come in, explain this. He'll probably read this, explain it better than I could. And then he'll, you guys will write everything that he write, not everything, but, you know, the two elements. Yeah. And then whoever has the secret has to come over and tell everybody in this room the secret. I think that's you. So, you'll have to tell everybody the secret. 
What? Because he doesn't know. He doesn't know. That's explaining what it really is. Oh, okay. I was like, why is it a secret if we're all going to know? So he's explaining how good it is and how great everything, every one of these things are, and then that gives the actual reality of it. Wait, cool. How do you know what? How do you know which one you have? It says, so, placard E, you'll be the one over there. So should we start right with our secret? Not yet. Wait till he comes in to start everything. He'll go around, and you guys will, like, he'll, like, it's a tour. So he'll go through every single one, one at a time. And throughout that, while he's doing that, it doesn't matter if you're on one, just give the secret to everybody. Everybody got, anybody clear on what you guys need to do? Not yet. Wait till he comes in. I don't want in. it. Everybody good? Are you guys good? No. I'm leaving. I'm going to get him in. Be ready to hide the secret. Don't get caught. Be ready to do push-ups. They are brief. I'm gonna tell you. You told us to write it down. Oh, well, told us to write it down. Why you guys not standing? Everybody have a pen or a pencil. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Who took my markers? Did you take my markers? <laughs> What's so <up>, funny? <laughs> you know where my markers are? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you want to live to see tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Then stop laughing. <laughs> First rule today, when you refer to me, address me, or ask me a question, you shall refer to me as Supreme and Glorious Leader McKelkey. Failure to do so will result in 20 push-ups. Does anybody have a question? What? Why is it so long? 20 push-ups. You did not address me as Supreme and Glorious <laughs> Leader McKelkey. Does anybody else have a question? What? Supreme and glorious leader McCalkey. Yes. Why can't we just say Supreme McCalkey? Because that's my title, and you didn't use it right there, 20 push-ups. <laughs> okay, here's what's going to happen. Does everybody have their blank chart that has the pieces of art on the side? You have the privilege. 20 push-ups. I am not senor. <laughs> Some of you will learn quickly, and some of you will learn slowly, but all of you will learn. You're at zero. Here's what we need to do. All of your desks over here, if we could please slide them out towards the middle so we have room on this side. You have the privilege today of getting a tour of the fascist art gallery in 1939. So this is the year before World War II breaks out. We have some awesome art for you from four different countries, two pieces of art per country for a total of eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our friend, comrade Mussolini. Okay, His nickname, he kind of gave himself, is El Duce. Does anyone know what that means in Italian? It means the duke, or like the prince, okay, in Italian. You've probably seen a picture of him or heard of him, okay? We read his fascist manifesto in class on Monday and Tuesday, right? So, we're going to start over here. You need to bring your little printout page, something to write on and something to write with, over here.
I have some music and speeches that we'll listen to in the background. Okay. Here's the first piece of art. If you look on your chart, you should see a picture of a smiling, handsome guy. This is Benito Mussolini. Okay. In 1938, a smiling Mussolini greeted this crowd of adoring fans. These are Italian people, and you can see in the sea of people, there's tens of thousands of them who are cheering for him and happy that he is their leader. Okay, in 1938, he came home from Munich, Germany, where he and his friend Hitler made a peace deal with the Allies. Remember the pinky swear. Hey, Hitler, don't take any more land and we won't fight you. Okay, that was the Munich Conference of 1938. So when El Duce, Mussolini, came home, all of his countrymen were really fired up and happy and said, you're such a good leader, you secured world peace. And look at him, he's just a handsome guy smiling, he looks tough, I would not pick a fight with him. They called him Salvatore della Pace, which means, in Italian, anyone want to guess? Savior of... Uh, What's Pace? Savior of the peace, write that down. He is an awesome leader. He is the first guy to institute fascism anywhere in modern history almost 10 years before Hitler did, okay? And Hitler and him are going to turn out to be good friends. This is him speaking. Does anyone have a question about Exhibit A? Do not look at my computer screen. Does anyone have a question about Exhibit A? Okay, as you can tell, he's an awesome guy, and the Italian people are fortunate to have him as their leader. Okay, besides El Duce, what's a nickname we give him? Because he's the first fascist leader in Europe. So what do we call him? The father of fascism. Mikelki, 20 push-ups. That's what we should call him. Oh, I thought you were referring to me. You better not be. I don't like you guys being behind me. Come around. Making me nervous. And I'm sure Mr. Raza explained, as was his job for me, or I will shoot him if he didn't do it right, if I catch any of you saying anything bad about any of these glorious leaders or their countries, you will be doing wall sits, squat jacks, push-ups, or anything else I feel like will help rehabilitate you and learn that these guys are all awesome and their countries are indeed perfect. Okay, so if I have any inkling of that going on, you will be doing push-ups until I'm tired of watching you do push-ups. And that takes a lot. Yeah. Okay? All right, if no one has a question, placard B moving down, you see a picture of an Italian farmer. How do we know he's Italian? His hat. In his hat, he has a little Italian flag. He is carving out S-P-Q-R over the top of the word Ethiopia. Does anyone know why or what the symbolism is there? What is SPQR from Roman history? Of who? The Roman Republic. Okay, in Latin, it meant Senatus Populus K Romanus, which means the Senate and people of Rome. Okay, if you see like the movie Gladiator or anything with ancient Romans, you'll see that SPQR, some of them even had that tattooed on their arms. That is the rallying cry of ancient Rome, which remember Mussolini said, I'm making Italy great again, just like ancient Rome. And they are colonizing Ethiopia. That's the symbolism. See how he's carving it over the word Ethiopia? Ethiopia is a worthless, tiny piece of crap African country that luckily for the Ethiopians is being colonized by the Italians. Okay, you see there's kind of a desert in the background, but this Italian farmer is here to build up Ethiopia and make it part of the Italian empire. In 1935, El Duce, Benito Mussolini's army, invaded Ethiopia. In 1935, you need to know this. He invaded Ethiopia in 1935. 
Now, the purpose of this poster, you're familiar with some that are like recruiting posters. You guys know Uncle Sam over there, right? That's to get guys to sign up for the Army. This is to recruit strong, intelligent, awesome Italian farmers to come help colonize Ethiopia because the Ethiopians live in the Dark Ages. They're all stupid. Okay, so luckily the Italians are here to teach them how to farm, so this poster is recruiting Italian farmers to come help build up Ethiopia and make it part of the new Italian empire. And as you can see, they're doing a good job. Okay, and fascism is perfect and awesome, and anyone who says otherwise will do push-ups. Does anyone have a question about Exhibit B from Italy? Do you see how awesome... Oh, question? You will address me as Supreme and Glorious Leader McKelkey. 20 push-ups. Then ask your question. Does anyone else have a question? Do we see how awesome and perfect Italy is? How lucky are the Italian people to have this guy as their leader? Very lucky. You're, I like you. You're smart. Them, not so much. You will do real push-ups or I will sit on your back and you will do 20 more. Get your butt down. Do them like an Italian, not an Ethiopian. <laughs> no. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question about fascist Italy? Okay, wonderful. We're going to move on to our friend Adolf Hitler over here. We have two pieces of art from Germany. So, Noel, what was that? Huh? What's in your right hand? Show me. What's this? What's this? It's good. This? Bad stuff about Hitler? Wall sits. Nah. Get on the wall. <laughs> Get on the wall. Get on the wall. 90 degrees. And no, that's not 90. Lower. Lower. <laughs> Lower. <laughs> That's there, bad. you will not move. You will not move until you are done learning about how glorious and awesome Nazi Germany is. If he comes up from ninety and you show me, I will reward you with the Jolly Rancher. Do not let him sit at quarter squat like a wuss. Now, moving on to Exhibit C. Okay, if you did not know, Germany has been treated horrifically by the Allies. Their economy has been ruined. Their people have been betrayed by the Weimar Republican government. Luckily for them in 1933, there's a new man on the scene. You may have heard of him. His name is Adolf Hitler. If you didn't know, this poster clearly proves kids everywhere loved Hitler. If you cannot sprechen Sie Deutsch or speak German, what it says on here is, children, what do you know about our leader? And he's like hugging this nice little Aryan kid. He's got a smile on his face. You will notice that he has a swastika armband, just like the background on my screensaver right now. Just like the flags over here. So everyone is proud to be German. Now that Hitler's in charge, he's going to make Germany matter and be strong once again. <laughs> kind of looks like Noel came up a little bit. What? I, if he does, I will give you a Jolly Rancher That's for nice. turning him yeah, in. Turn hey, good thing we're almost halfway done with Germany. Yes. She didn't address you as Supreme Glorious Leader. McKelkey. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to do 20 push ups. Good point. I can't be low. Get back on the wall. I can't be low. Get down. <laughs> I listen, it's I appreciate you trying. Comrade Hunt, I appreciate you standing up for the rules. Does anyone have a question about placard C? What message is this conveying about Hitler? Look on your chart. He's the best. And not only is he the best, who really likes him? Children. Little kids especially. I wish he was my dad. If only I would have been so lucky. What's so funny? Now we're 
we started, I said all of you will learn. Some of you will learn quickly, some of you will learn slowly, but you will all learn. He got all the, uh, let's go. I was talking to you. It was, a, it was an exclamation. To everybody. Oh, yeah. No, to you too. You will not do it again. To everybody. Hey, guy you. in the wall, shut your mouth. Okay, moving on. The placard speech. If you can't speak German, what this says is healthy parents, healthy children. Okay, in 1934, this was the cover of the 1934 Nazi magazine. If you did not know the true strength of Nazi Germany is the health and purity of their race, which this magazine cover clearly shows a bunch of strong, happy Aryans. I mean, look at this little kid right here. He's probably three, and he's flexing up, and he's got bigger biceps than you, my Okay? So you can tell clearly Aryans are supreme. Get your book off the floor. <laughs> All German people are healthy, strong, and happy. They are encouraged by our glorious leader, Adolf Hitler, to have as many kids as possible because that is the true strength of the German state, is the health of our people. You were slipping when you were passing secrets about Hitler. That's what you were really Shut your mouth. Did you hear me? Shut your mouth. The future of Germany depends on healthy, strong soldiers and women who can make more healthy, strong soldiers. Okay? You did not know Aryan women who had four or more children in Nazi Germany got a medal. Okay? That medal was known as the Mother's Cross of Honor just for having four kids. Because that is the true strength of the German people. Without those kids, Germany wouldn't be so powerful. But luckily they have the strength of the Aryan race and our glorious leader at all. Kids love everywhere. Does anyone have a question about what this is trying to convey or what's going on in Germany at the time? Are Germans truly lucky to have a guy like Hitler rescue them from the depths of despair and misery? <laughs> because I remind you, Americans, you are going through your own Great Depression in the early 1930s. Yours is a sneeze compared to the German Great Depression. A good history teacher I know back in America tells his kids, Germany's depression was four or five times worse than the American Great Depression. <laughs> You'll think twice before you open your mouth. Does anyone else have a question? <laughs> Notice how questions will prolong his suffering and pain. Supreme and glorious people have... Yes, comrade. How old is he? Who? he recovered from his wounds in World War One, so he had to come back and serve the American people. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, so he was exposed to mustard gas, and he actually went blind temporarily and had some health problems. And he also got shrapnel on his leg, so the German army said, you gotta go home. Francisco Franco, who is the leader of Spain, over here by the door. By the door. Some guns and tanks and 
aircraft, and even an angel. Welcome to fascist Spain. <clears throat> if you do not speak Spanish, or you only speak textbook Spanish from your Wyoming Spanish teacher, at the bottom it says Spain resurrected. And you can tell there is an angel on this page. This is from 1936. Spain fought a civil war. And fortunately for Spain in 1936, the fascists won the civil war. And their new glorious leader, Francisco Franco, became the leader of Spain. Daddy, pay attention, please. If you have a question to ask. I don't like this crap. So being the glorious leader of Mugoki, yes, comrade. I think she was stuck in Spain. Show me evidence and I won't be working with another man. Otherwise, I'm keeping an eye on her. Oh. Oh. Look, I sense some subversive activities. Hey, okay. a couple minutes, and the wall says, will change your mind. Ask Comrade Gary. Okay. Now, you can also tell from this poster, is war a good thing to fascists? Look at all these cannons, soldiers, tanks, aircraft. This is the angel of war that's helping Francisco Franco and his fascist men. And it's clearly glorifying war because we all know war is awesome. It makes you tough. And anything in life worth having, you must suffer and fight and struggle for. Also, as a nation, war makes you tougher. Countries who don't fight are wusses, and they will be conquered by their neighboring countries who are willing to fight. Peaceful countries are like fat kids who sit on the couch and eat Cheetos and never go outside. That might seem like fun until somebody fights you, and you're some lazy, Cheeto-eating, video game-playing slug. You can't get your butt kicked. So you can tell fascist countries are doing awesome because they're strong, and they like to fight. Fighting is good. Does anyone have a question about the Black or the E? Okay, next one. Oh, yes. Supreme and glorious leader of the Republic. Yes. This? That's from the future. I don't know, Smeagol. I might be making fun of Apple fanboys because this is where all the iPhone chargers are now. But that's just a guess. Okay, next placard right here. We have placard F. This clearly shows the strength of fascist Spain is their people. Okay, we've got a miner, a soldier, a student. This guy right here is even holding up his baby. That's how much they believe in and love fascist Spain. Okay, and all of them are marching under the banner of the fascist party. Now, it's important to understand the context in which Francisco Franco came to power. Prior to him winning the Civil War and unifying Spain under one of the Austrian fascist government, Spain had gone through some severe turmoil, fighting, changing presidents, and the Civil War. And the Spanish people are so happy and so fortunate to have Francisco Franco unite them and be their new leader. Comrade Aguirre, are you listening? What did I just say? And you can tell now they are united under one fascist band, and everyone gets along and loves Franco. You won't find anyone who's in Spain who doesn't think he's a great leader because he is. And Spain is perfect. Does anyone have a question about the placard? Yeah.
have a textbook to write on, or a piece of paper, or a pencil, you cannot take that with you. If you do take anything unauthorized outside of this room, you will do squat jacks for the remainder of today's class period. Pencils or paper. I don't mind your phone, but no pencils, paper, or books shall leave the room. What you do in the hallway is your own business. If you bring any anti-fascist propaganda and lies back in this classroom where I hear you talking about them, again, you will suffer the consequences. You will be re-educated through physical punishment. Three minutes starting now. Enjoy your break. 